or you just laugh. Yeah. Oh, good morning. I didn't know I was live. Well, praise the Lord this morning. It's so good to be here this morning. And uh, I'm looking forward to this morning. I'm looking forward to preaching the first time in my new church here. I mean, just awesome to think about, ain't everybody? I love it. It's our own building. So in saying all that, we need to take care of our building, right? Keep it clean, keep it straightened up, do the right thing to buy. So praise God for it this morning. My computer is acting up bad this morning. I tell it to go someplace and says, nope, I won't go there. Here it again. Hang on. Everybody good to be here this morning? Amen. It's crazy, isn't it, huh? Uh, that uh, 
that uh, don't have a pastor, I'm all of a sudden pastor. <laughs> and I'll bury people. I don't even know. But my point is, here's my point. They have a drawing to this place. Okay? It's our job now to bring them on in. Okay, guys? Well, that's our job. We've got to do this, man. We've got to get this done. Oh, we got to just talk about talk to the lady here to walk across the parking lot and say, hey, you're going to church tomorrow. She blew me off, but that's right. That time I said, I'm going to hit her again. You're going to church tomorrow. Or a little baby, you know. You, just, you just keep after. You don't give up. That's the only way we're going to fill this out. And it's not about filling this house, guys. What's about to me is fill this up, teach them how to disciple them, send them out of here, get them out of here. Shoot, shoot. That's what God told us to do, everybody. And so that's something with the Lord. I don't know why I got off on that, but we did, okay? But anyway, pre-tribulation, mid-tribulation, all that, you can believe what you want to believe. Uh, it's not going to keep you from getting to heaven, okay? But I truly believe in, in that they're going to be in the tribulation. But a lot of people don't, so that's fine. I think for the most part, our concern should be the lost. As we've been talking about, the lost should be our main concern. Remember what I said for how many years I said it? That, uh, that uh, <clears throat> this city shall be a city after God's own heart? You watch. It's going to be the most exciting thing you've ever seen in your life. And it's going to come from the most crazy place. But you watch what happens. It's going to happen. I believe with all my heart it's going to happen. So I think it's a lot. And when we have one of these disasters, tornado, uh, uh, hurricane, uh, all these different things, even makes it more confusing for people with some of the preachers and coming out and preaching. It's really amazing to me how that we have all these preachers and all this stuff going on, but all of a sudden a few things happen. Now they're going to start preaching on the end times. Really? You should be preaching on them all the time. That's what Jesus said. Remind them that I'm coming back. Remind them. Tell them over and over. But they wait till there's a disaster and they want to put all this stuff with it and uh, say they know when he's coming back. You know? We don't need all that. We don't need all that. All we need is to be going out there and reaching the lost. That's what we need. That's what we need, everybody. Do you understand, everybody? If you're, each one of us has had that responsibility. Yeah, I'm looking at you. But girl, you have responsibility to teach, tell someone about Jesus. You boys, y'all have responsibility. You too, back there. You've got a responsibility to tell where the opportunity there is. Oh, opportunity may not be every day, but you do have opportunity. I mean, you had an opportunity and you backed out of it. Boy, I'm sure I won't talk about that. We've all been there, haven't we? We messed up. I'll never forget one time a long time ago I was sitting in the autumn zone parking lot and I don't know why I was sitting there I think Brian he was with me uh, I don't know if he's with me or not but we were sitting in there and I had the window rolled down and a bird shows up I had the window down and the bird lands on my mirror right beside me he's just looking at me I'm, not, I'm just close to this bird I said what you landing there for and I just made a, a comment didn't know someone was sitting in a car sitting there listening to me I said Bird, get on out of here. I need someone I can talk to Jesus about. And the lady next door says, we could tell me. We had a conversation about Jesus. Literally, it was crazy. Would you with me, Brian? It was on its own. I think it was back when we did Thompson trading, but it was so cool because that bird, I think what caused it all. Crazy bird. See, God uses all kinds of things for us, guys. He opens a door for us every place you look. But a lot of times, we're too afraid to crawl in that door. We don't want to go in that door. You know why? Because we feel inadequate. We feel like we had prayed enough. You know, we had read enough. Okay, come on now, God. Listen to me. We're to read. We're to pray. And I'm telling you, the amount of time you spend, the amount of relationship you have, that's up to you, okay? That's your responsibility. Up to you. But what I'm saying is, you can have a relationship, even if things ain't all going right, and you can still minister to people. Do you understand that? Just because you ain't doing everything right doesn't mean you can't talk to someone about Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Just don't lie to them. Tell them about Jesus. Tell them what Jesus did. Tell him what he did for you. He changed your life. The subject matter of chapter 24 is a subject matter that should be preached on a very regular basis if you're going on about it. Because, because one of the, we were very regular, we, we want these signs of his great return. So let's get started in verse 29. We're starting right now. Glorious return. Verse 29. Let's start here, okay? Uh, verse 29, chapter 24. Um, but immediately after the tribulation, listen closely, after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be dark. How many know how long the tribulation, everybody? Seven years. Everybody know that? You got the first three and a half years, not so bad. The last three and a half years ain't so cool. 
Okay, that's what kind of the way it is, okay? But seven years. Now you learned something today. Seven years long, okay? First three and a half is decent. The last three and a half ain't no good at all for any of us, okay? Nobody. It'll be rough. Okay, so the sun, and then, but after all of that, then the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light. Tribulation period's over, okay? Everybody's over. And the stars will fall from the sky. And you know what's going to happen when all the stars fall from the sky, don't you? Okay, I don't have to explain that to you. It's going to be pretty ugly. It's going to be pretty nasty. Think about it. Stars falling from the sky. Uh, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Verse 30, and then the sign of the Son of Man will appear. This got me this morning. I'm getting, I've got Vicky. I've run her around the house and baby, I've never seen this before. I've read this scripture and I've read this scripture. I've never seen it before. Verse 20, verse 30. Listen to it closely. And then the sign of the Son of Man will appear. Okay, there's going to be a sign. What are signs? Remember we started out first on chapter 24 in the very beginning? He used signs like looking at the building. So what he's trying to tell us is the signs in which, in which he's going to give the body of Christ is going to be something we can see. We'll know it. We'll be able to see it. It's not going to be something crazy. We can't see it. We're going to know it, okay? So now let's back up. Now listen to the scripture again. Verse 30. And then the sign of the Son of Man will appear. So there's going to be a sign, something in the sky. So it appears that there's a sign of some sort just before he comes on the clouds of glory. It's something. We don't know what it is because he doesn't tell us. He just said there's going to be a sign before his appearing. Okay? Comes to the clouds of glory. We don't know what that sign is. But all throughout chapter 24, we know Jesus makes it clear that we will be able to see it. Now, I brought these just out of here, just crazy stuff. Right here. This is a pet piece of paper. That's a sign. That's got a sign. Listen to me clearly. That's how easy it is for us to see that sign. I want you to hear this. You've got to hear this. But you've got to be in, you've got to be in straight with the Lord. I mean, you need to be prayed up and everything else. But that sign that we're looking for for His coming will be that clear to us. To His, the body of Christ. If you've got your neighbor going, I don't know what's going on. You know where he's at. Okay, everybody? You've got to understand that. That's simple. That's simple. Take the Word of God as it's written. Not try to make it hard. It's simple. It really is simple if you'll just take a little bit of time to study it. So anyway, what I'm saying is, i never seen that before. i never seen that there's got to be this other sign. So now, here's what's interesting. We don't know the, dip, the, the time thing difference between the sign and it's actually coming back. He doesn't tell us here now. He just says there's going to be a sign. Then I'm going to come back. So it's kind of interesting uh, to see all of that and see how it goes there. We're not sure what the expanse of time is on this. We don't know. We don't have a clue. But what we know is Jesus is coming back. Amen? Amen. Jesus is coming back for His glorious church. Spot free, wrinkle free. Just, I mean, He's going to come back and get us. Yeah, i got to say it. You don't have to be perfect to get to heaven, everybody. Come on now. I want, I mean, you got to get a hold of this. Especially you young kids, sometimes you screw up really bad. You know what I mean? Okay? That's okay. That's got to forgive you. Make sure your parents know if you're under age. Take care of everything the right way. And move on. Just move on. Okay? It's that simple. We've got to make sure. Because you need to know. Mom and Daddy needs to know that you're not doing stuff you shouldn't be doing that can keep you out of heaven. Are you hearing me? <laughs> okay, let's do it. My point is this. None of these things are going to... Uh, it's going to be happening all over the United States. It's going to be happening all over the world. Not just here, not just there, everywhere. It's going to be happening everywhere. All over the world. Uh, man, i got to say this, man. It's so important. I kind of keep when I preach this morning, but Jesus said this. He said, I gave you the Holy Ghost. How many know you got the Holy Ghost? How many know that? Okay. He said, I gave you the Holy Ghost to help you. He says, I'm your helper. Okay, he's going to help you. In that time of need when you're struggling, uh, you just want to wring dad's neck. No, not really. But anyway. <laughs> then those are the times that the Holy Ghost helps you. They help you, help you. It really doesn't calm you down. The Holy Ghost, I need some help, man. And here's the main thing the Holy Ghost does for each one of us. I've said this and I've preached it several times. The Holy Ghost will tell us when the things are to come. He promised us that. You will know, Jolene, the things when they come, if you're right where you need to be with God. You'll know the signs. 
You'll know what's going on. You won't be surprised. You'll be caught off guard. Us Christians will not be caught off guard. Everybody else will be. We will not be if we're where we need to be with God. Does that make sense, everybody? So it's important. So He gave us that Holy Ghost to guide us. He gave us the Holy Ghost, gave us the gift of letting us know when things are come. And I want to share this with you. It's not about just, just that when, when Jesus comes back. Parents, the Holy Ghost will tell you if you will talk to Him and be with Him about your children. He will share with you if they're doing things they shouldn't be. He'll share with you. Trust me, I raised five of them. He will share with you. You hear me, parents? The Holy Spirit will... You're going, man, I don't know if he did that or not. Well, I pray a little bit. That's the Holy Ghost. You'll find out the answer. I got some crazy stories, but I'm going to tell them this morning. But I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost will tell you about your children. Help you with your children. Show you about your children if you will pray. You ask the Holy Spirit. Children, young people, I'm different with you. The Holy Ghost will share with you what you need to know. Okay? Are you hearing me? He will share with you what you have to know. And then he goes on, he says, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky with power and great glory. Verse 31, and he will send my. Uh, wow. <laughs> Okay. Uh, then he will gather a great trumpet will blow. The angels will blow this great trumpet. What's going to happen? Going, whoo! I wish I had one of those. It'd be cool. You know, be real loud. So far. What are they called, Julian? Do a horn. Ram's horn. So far? I don't know. They call it so far. Shafar? Shafar or something like that. Isn't that what it is? Shafar? Or, you know, you know, but when, when they do it, it's really loud. It's going to be cool. Anyway. Uh, but anyway, they gather together. They will gather together his in chapter 24, the elect. Who is the elect? You. Brother, you the elect. That will make you feel good. I'm the elect, man. I'm the elect. You know why? Because Jesus said you are a son and daughter of the Most High God. You are the elect. We are the elect. So when you see that word elect in there, he's talking about you. Those who are who are born again. Those who are who are have a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's who it is. He said, then he goes on and says, I'll gather from the four winds from one end of the sky to the other. Remember back when Jesus said, if he hadn't cut these days short, remember that? Back up here, up here in 24, we read it on up in here. Jesus said, if I hadn't cut these days short, then none of us would have made it. That's crazy to think about, guys. No one would have made it if it wasn't for God. Mercy again, cutting the days short. That's why I say, I know, I believe we're going to tribulation. Why would he say that? I'm just saying, think about it. Why would he say that? Anyway, okay. <clears throat> um, I'll let you think about that for just a little bit. There's plenty of good study material in Matthew chapter 24. I want to reiterate that some people get frustrated so I can't read the Bible. Yes, you can. But you've got to have that interest. You've got to have that hunger. I know how it is. You get started reading. How many of you ever been there? <laughs> you know, you read your Bible, you go to sleep, you're praying. It's okay, it's okay. It's not a big deal, okay? But what I want you to get at, you need to study your word, everybody. Boys, you need to be studying that word. You need, you need to know scripture in your heart. How are you gonna how are you gonna tell someone about Jesus if you don't even have scripture in your heart? But the Bible says this that if he, you've read it, you studied it, you said the Holy Ghost, another gift, the Holy Ghost Spirit, the Holy Spirit will bring it back to your what? Remembrance. So you'll have that information you need in scripture. But if you ain't never read it, you don't got it. You know what I'm saying? You don't have it in, in, your, in your PC up here. <clears throat> so in closing, yeah, I'm getting shorter and shorter to get older. I don't know what's going on. Um, church, we got to pick up our bootstraps. All of us here this morning, I'll say to myself, I've been lazy. We've got a church to get built. We've got lots of things that can be done, simple things that can be done, but we got to get a bootstrap picked up. But I'm not worried about this building. It can fall down for it. I'm worried about those who are on the outside or who are dying going to hell. That's what I'm concerned about. If we get the building done, okay, good. It looked good, okay, it looked nice. Can you imagine all that tin up there, how pretty that's going to look? Ooh. But that's not going to save people. What's going to save people is you and me, me and you. We've got to get out there and get busy talking to these people. I think I died, didn't I? 
better. Yeah, that's better. Anyway, in closing. In closing. In closing. In closing. There it is. Oops, sorry. In closing. We've got to pick up our bootstraps and get the get this house in order. Your house. Are you hearing me? Your home, your home needs to be in order first, then the church, okay? Some people got that backwards, and I did it for years, I'll be honest. My kids suffered because of it, because I put the church before my home. And so I said, it's open. I mean, it's my bad, you know. I, I want to get busy. I want to do something. I want to do something to God. I mean, I just, I was pumped, man. Still am, just a little slower in my pumping, <laughs> you know. But in closing, we got we got a community, a whole community out here, everybody, that needs Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. They need it. That's how we're going to fill this building up. And then we're going to teach them, and then we're going to kick them out of here, okay? The people on the outside that don't know God, do you know they're waiting on one of us to say something to them? I'm telling you the truth. I am telling you the truth. Why do I say that? Jesus said the fields are white, and the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. These people want to know about Jesus, guys. They don't want to know a bunch of... Well, I go to the Baptist church. They don't want to know all that. They want to know that Jesus loves them. They want to know that God, God's going to take care of them. They want to know that when there's no hope, He gives them hope. That's what they want to know. They don't care whether you're a Baptist or a Pentecostal or what you are. They need hope. So we don't need to be telling them about whether we're this or we're that. We need to tell them about who Jesus Christ is. We, that's what we need, okay, everybody? There's so much work to be done in this town. Do you realize there's 3,500 people? That's what they call it in the community of Cleveland. Not the community, but the city proper is only 3,500. I thought more than that. There's only 3,500 people here. But guys, it's a sad statement when there's 13 churches in this town and half this community is still dying and going to hell. Are you hearing me? They're dying and going to hell. And there's 13 churches in this community. We're number 14 now. We're in, we're in town now. Yeah, maybe they'll put me in a new paper finally. I don't really care. You understand where I'm coming from, everybody, this morning? Come on now. We got a people out there that need to know Jesus. And they are waiting on you and me to say something to them. They are waiting. Trust me. Try it. If you don't believe me, try it today or tomorrow. First chance you get someone that seems like there's an open door, tell them about Jesus. And I promise you, they're going to listen to you. Most of them, they will. But you've got to be the one to first put that foot, foot first. Okay? We know that Jesus doesn't want anyone to perish. I just, I, I have trouble. I, I struggle. I want to cry every time I think about that God sent His only Son for me. And He messes my head up. For me. He sent it for you too, brother. Just for you alone. That's hard to imagine, ain't it? That our God loves us so much. So notice this morning, maybe not either. Yeah. Notice this morning, this is still part of the original question that we started out in, in chapter 24. The very first question was asked to his disciples. I, I didn't write it down, but I don't read it to you. Here's the question. We're still going to go back to the question, what the disciples asked. This is what started this whole chapter 24. It's right here. Right here, ready? And as he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us when will these things be? That's number one. And what will be the sign of your coming? Number two. And then when will be the end of the age? In other words, when's it all going to be over? When, when's Jerusalem going to be set up? We're going to be sitting in a holy city. <laughs> Can you imagine? Gates with pearl. Just, how big is it? I don't remember how big it is. It's like a huge monster gate made out of one big pearl. That's crazy, man. But those are three original questions. We've only made through one question so far. We haven't even made the second question or the third question that the disciples asked. They wanted to know. Just like you this morning. There's not one of you in here this morning that does not want to know when Jesus comes back. Some of us want to know because, you know, we want to get things right first. You know, <laughs> make sure we're in good shape. You know what I mean? And some of us just want to know Him. Just love Him. I'm ready for Him to come back personally. Let's go. Come on. I don't have an issue at all. None. I know a lot of you want to see your grand, your babies grow up and have babies and all that other stuff. That's cool. But Jesus is coming back, you guys. And it's quick. He's coming back. All this stuff you see on television, boy, you need to sure be careful what you're watching on TV. I mean, be so careful. 
some of that stuff on there is just garbage. I mean garbage. News is just garbage. No one knows when that day will be. But each of us are in control of our own lives. You can't blame your day. You can't blame your mama. You can't blame your wife, your spouse, or anybody else of where you're at and why you're in the place you're in with God. You cannot blame anybody but your own self. Pastor, I don't read very good. Well, I don't need I didn't use I read like some retarded kid. I mean, I just that's how it was. I mean, I was just a slow, slow reader. But time and time again, it kept reading. It kept reading. I finally got where I could read a few words faster, you know? But, but you have to do that. You have to want to read. You have to want to study that. My question this morning, are you hungry for God's Word? Are y'all guys hungry for God's Word? Are you hungry to know the answers? Are you hungry to see the tears falling out of someone's eyes when you lead them to the Lord? Are you hungry for that this morning? I am. I'm hungry for it, man. Hungry to see these people come to Jesus. We're in control. And the Holy Spirit is the one which we want are on our side, I promise you. We roll up our bootstrap and begin to share the gospel. I got a bunch of he's and he's. I think my must have been on. I didn't know it was on. So this morning, as I finish up right here, just a few of us. Brother Patrick's making us some uh, altars. Thank God for that. Gonna have some nice old altars sitting there one of these days here for long. We don't have to go to an altar. So this morning, as I close in prayer, if you're that person that's not where you need to be with God with your prayer life, with your reading life, with your studying life, then I would suggest that you, you get busy getting it together. Why do you want to depend on me to tell you? Would you rather know yourself exactly what it is? I would. I would. I want to know exactly. Well, you're supposed to trust your preacher, okay? But I'm not perfect. Okay, everybody? But, but, but my point is, I want to know. Just like you want to know. But first of all, we got a whole community that needs Jesus Christ this morning. So as I close this morning, let's think about those who are out there. And if you're here this morning, close your eyes, bow your head this morning. If you're here this morning, right now, and you're not where you need to be. You know, you know that you ain't where you're supposed to be. You should be a lot further than you are. So you've been in this thing long enough that you shouldn't be still drinking milk. You ought to be taking some meat. But it's easier just to let me do it, the preacher, than to study for myself and to read for myself. So if that's you, you just ask the Lord right now to forgive you. You've got to be forgiven. Yes, Lord, forgive you. Say, Lord, forgive me right now. Lord, forgive me for I have not done what I should have done. I haven't read like I should have done. I haven't studied like I should have. I haven't, I haven't done what I know I should do, Lord. I know you don't expect me to do anything except what I already know. So, Father, I pray this morning, each and every person is building, each and every person at the sound of my voice, if that's you this morning, that you get yourself together, you'd roll up them bootstraps, tuck in that shirt, and get out there and start preaching the gospel to those around you. Sharing with them, showing them that God is real. That's what they're looking for, the real God. We just thank you for it this morning. We ask your blessing and your favor upon this whole people this morning. As they go, that every place they set their feet or put place they put their hands shall prosper for the glory and the kingdom of God. So as we close this morning, we thank you, Father, for those this morning who said, That's me. I gotta get it together. I gotta get it together. So I just give you the praise and all the glory. We thank you, Lord, and give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Is there any other announcements I missed this morning? No? No? Okay, no.